Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm David Knight. It's Monday, January 27th, 2014. And tomorrow is the big night that Obama is going to give us his State of the Union. Or maybe we should say it's the state of his regime because they put out press releases that are being echoed throughout the mainstream media about how he's going to assert his unilateral agenda. See, that's semantics for dictating what he's going to do. And of course, he's filing executive orders, he's usurping powers that are not given to him in the Constitution, and then he's locking up critics of his regime, he's befriending and supplying al-Qaeda terrorists, and tomorrow night he's going to talk about how he's going to use his new powers that he's assumed to bypass immigration law. Now, look at how the mainstream media is picking this up everywhere. The new term, this is no longer dictator, this is now assert unilateral agenda. You'll see this everywhere. This is how they operate. They come up with these terms, these semantic terms that give them the high ground in an argument. If he were to say that he's just gonna be giving executive orders, that sounds a little bit too authoritarian, but if he says he's going to assert a unilateral agenda, it's like, mm, oh, this kind of sounds interesting. And a lot of people are picking it up just like they picked up gravitas. Remember how that term was picked up out of obscurity and started echoing throughout the media many years ago to really kind of a comical term? Well, now you see that with this new phrase. And how is that going to look? Well, we see that just as his friends on the left are calling for him to be more of a dictator, to assert his unilateral agenda, we now see that the CFR, the Council on Foreign Relations, is calling on him to assert his friendship of al-Qaeda, to openly proclaim it, to embrace them. They've been supplying them, training them, and allying with them for quite some time. And of course, as Ted Cruz and Dennis Kucinich have pointed out, we were going to be acting as al-Qaeda's air force in Syria, and, but the Council on Foreign Relations is pointing out they want him to do more. In an article entitled, The Good and Bad of R.R. al-Sham, yeah, it's a sham, all right, an al-Qaeda-linked group worth befriending, the authors even admit that the leader, quote, published a statement praising bin Laden and al-Qaeda's current chief, al-Zawahiri. And they said it underscored the fact that al-Qaeda and Arar al-Sham are joined at the hip. Well, of course, even though they're joined at the hip, though, we should be supporting them. And we should do it, and this is what's changed, we should do it openly, openly. They've been doing it covertly for quite some time, as we've pointed out for a very long time at InfoWars. Now they're going to come out and do it openly, just as they're now openly persecuting political enemies. We see that Dinesh D'Souza has become a target of the Obama administration. And the guy who produced his documentary on Obama said, I never feared my government until now. Now, this is the same guy who produced Schindler's List. And he says, I've never had the occasion to think that I had to fear my government. I never had the thought that I had a reason to look over my shoulder until now. Because why? Because Obama has been attacking the Tea Party with the IRS and with the FBI. Now he's attacking filmmakers, he's attacking political opponents, finding minor violations with his opponents while they let things like Fast and Furious and Benghazi go unaddressed. There's no criminal actions here. Now during the Nixon administration, if you'll remember, the IRS commissioner did not execute the enemies list that Nixon gave him. He set it in the safe and then he gave it to investigators later on. But on Obama's watch, exactly the opposite happens. They audit all of these Tea Party organizations, and then the FBI works with them on the audits, and nobody gets investigated, no one goes to jail. Now, the other thing that he's going to hit when he asserts his unilateral agenda tomorrow night, the key thing that he's going to hit on is going to be immigration. And Senator Sessions pushed back on that today. He said, immigration spikes are generating income inequality. And he points out, he says, today the U.S. admits one million immigrants a year. The plan supported by the president and Senate Democrats would increase that to three million a year or 30 million unskilled immigrants over the next 10 years. Did anyone ask the American people if they wanted to triple immigration? No, of course they wouldn't, because he's pursuing a unilateral agenda. He's not going to ask the American people. He's not going to ask Congress if they want to go along with this, because he's pursuing a unilateral agenda. It's just everything in the Constitution is out. You have no checks and balances, and Congress has no say, because Obama's just going to execute his executive orders. Now, it's not just the Obama administration, but it's international bankers who are getting into the act, who are working geopolitically, as well as doing some very fishy things with currency controls and with gold. We've asked if we could have an audit of the Federal Reserve. Maybe we should ask if we can audit 
Fort Knox as well. And a Kurt Nemo story on InfoWars today says, since the end of the 18th century, Ukraine formed an important part of the Russian and Soviet state, and the Russian Black Sea Fleet is located in the Crimea as a port that's leased to Russia by the Ukraine. So both the U.S. and the EU have an interest in weakening Russia. While the leaders of the resistance may be taking money from George Soros, do you really believe that the common people on the ground understand what's going on? They're very upset because of the genocide that Stalin committed against that region, what was called the Holomador. And that's something that the fellow who coined the term genocide pointed out. And it's interesting to look at that. That's what's galvanizing the people on the street. And there were four prongs to that attack. They cut off the political leadership. They co-opted the churches, said you're going to come along with the Russian Soviet line or you're going to be shut down. They then pulled in massive immigration, which in that case were other Russians, so that they could create competing groups, so they could get people who were going to support the government. And then they starved them to death in massive numbers. And it's interesting that we see similar parallels, don't we, to today in America. We see that they're bringing in massive immigration, which will balkanize the United States, people who will support their socialist agenda as well as co-opting the churches, as well as coming out our food supply. But there's other things that the banksters are doing. And this is interesting that we had a hoax that got a lot of people panicked for a brief period of time. And Paul Joseph Watson's story says, China cash transfer hoax plays into bank run fears. He said, there was an article by Forbes' Gordon Chang, now deleted, that claimed that the People's Bank of China, the central bank, has just ordered commercial banks to halt cash transfers. Now, of course, that got people's attention because just the previous day, they had seen HSBC hold back deposits from people, saying you can't have that money. Because it's not just rumors of currency control and the example that we saw the day before with HSBC, but they're concerned about a major gold scandal. This is something that's been reported by Washington's blog as well as Zero Hedge. We've been picking up their stories and running them in Infowars. This article from Washington's blog today says there's a major gold scandal going mainstream, and they say that, after all, nobody knows whether there's really 260 million ounces of gold in Fort Knox because the U.S. government won't let auditors inside. And, of course, we, we reported just last week that the German bank has been trying for a year to get their gold from the U.S. Federal Reserve, and they've simply refused to supply it. And over the last year, this is an article from the 20th, that was from Zero Hedge, and they said over the last year, they've only gotten 37 tons out of 674 that the German bank has on storage with the Federal Reserve. And the U.S. has only supplied five of those 37 tons. Most of it has come from France. And of course, that's only 0.7% of the gold that Germany is asking for has been supplied. So the question is, is the gold there? If a federal bank, if a central bank, can refuse to give money to another central bank. Do you think that they're really going to give you your fiat currency when you ask for it from the bank? That's exactly what we saw this weekend in the story about HSBC that I referred to. And that's one of the things that resonated with people when they saw this initial report about currency controls in China. People know that it's coming. We've seen this happen several times in banks. And now this most recent one just happened over the weekend. Bank run fears continue. HSBC restricts large cash withdrawals. This is from Zero Hedge. This came out of England, and we had listeners telling Radio 4's Money Box that they were stopped from withdrawing amounts that ranged from 5,000 pounds to 10,000 pounds. When they came in, of course, they had the money in their account. They didn't deny that they had the money. They said when we presented them with a withdrawal slip, they declined to give us some money because we couldn't provide them with a satisfactory explanation for what the money was for. They wanted a letter from the person involved. Why should you have to give them a letter to get your money out? Why should the German bank have to wait for eight years to get their gold out? What are they doing? If they're not going to give the gold to a German central bank, they're not going to give you your fiat currency when push comes to shove. Now, we're going to be right back, and we're going to talk about one of the most important things that you can do to opt out of this system. Stay tuned.
symbols are powerful and the globalists have hijacked the symbols of America. They've turned them into their own symbols. Well, we are restoring the idea of the true republic, not the counterfeit globalist empire by promoting the icon George Washington and others. That's why we're rolling out on a 100% made in America line of incredible pro-liberty apparel. We are repopularizing liberty. We are helping fellow Americans rediscover what made this country great. We are the spirit of 1776. We are 1776 worldwide. We are all brothers and sisters in arms in the animating contest of liberty in the long march towards humanity's ultimate destiny of freedom. Visit MadeIn1776.com today and vote with your dollars to promote truly made in America, high quality products and promote the ideals of liberty. Alex Jones here to tell you about how you can help spread liberty worldwide while also enjoying what I have found to be the best tasting 100% organic coffee on the planet. For more than a decade, my favorite coffee has come from the high mountains of southern Mexico where the Chiapas farmers grow their unique shade-grown Arabica beans. We have now managed to secure the sought-after beans in a highly customized blend. Discover and try a bag of the Patriot Blend 100% organic coffee at InfoWarsLife.com. This coffee gives gives you a long, smooth pick-me-up for hours without the headaches and heartburn that so many other coffees give me personally. Hands down, this is my favorite coffee, and it's taken us years to secure connections directly to the Chiapas Mexican farmers. Drop by the site today, order a bag or two, and I don't think you're going to be disappointed. Available in original or with our immune support infusion blend, you will be supporting a free press, all the while enjoying a truly great-tasting cup of my favorite coffee. Available at InfoWarsLife.com. Well, Democrats like Wendy Davis running for governor here in Texas like to portray themselves as pro-choice because it sounds so nice. But are they really pro-choice about anything other than whether you choose to kill your child? Now, if you want to educate your child and make those kind of educational choices, they oppose that. They want a government monopoly on all education. They want to force everyone into that. They don't want you to make decisions about your child's health whether you should vaccinate them, make decisions about their insurance. And of course, they don't want you to make decisions about most things individually in your life where you would have some choice. But this week, we're celebrating Educational Choice Week. And we've got an article from Ron Paul. He says every week should be school choice week. And he points out when the government usurps control of education from parents, education can easily become indoctrination. Well, it's not a possibility. I would go much stronger than that. I would say it's not that it can become indoctrination. It was designed to be indoctrination from the very beginning. Of course, we have the book from Charlotte Isserby that we sell, Dumbing Us Down, The Deliberate Dumbing Down of America. And of course, this is something that's been going on since the mid 1800s. When I confronted Bill Ayers about his involvement in education, how he likes to portray himself as someone who's all about anarchy, and yet he's one of the biggest statists out there. He said, oh, there's never been any case where the government hasn't been involved in education. Well, that simply isn't true. They got involved because back in the 1840s in communist communities like the Oneida experiment, they were trying to reproduce things that Plato had suggested in his Plato's Republic. They wanted essentially to destroy the family, to cut the ties from parents to children. They wanted the community to raise the child, the village to raise the child, if you will. And so they had all kinds of sexual promiscuity and different definitions of marriage that they were doing back then. And then they realized that even though it was a failure, the reason it was a failure was because they had to get the kids earlier. So that's what the educational establishment has been all about. That's the purpose of government education. It has been designed to get your kids at an early age so they can be brainwashed. Now we have an article that came out today from Kit Daniels, and they want to know if they're doing a good job of brainwashing your kids. So they are going to have in New York a data collection program that's going to track students from preschool to their career. They call it P-20, in other words, from preschool to 20 years of age. But of course, they're not going to stop at 20 years of age. Now, this is being promoted by New York State and the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. And they say, quote, it will allow NYSED, that's the New York State Education Department, and other agencies to link data without the need for agencies to unnecessarily add new regulations or seek legal policies to collect data out of their purview. In other words, 
they're just going to start pulling all this stuff together so they don't have to go to all that trouble of trying to come up with some kind of a legal justification for spying on you, for storing all of your information. Of course, every time we turn around, that is the government's main objective. They view you and your children as slaves. So one of the things you can do is get out of the system. That's the most effective thing you can do 